Why do we know about this more than you guys know about it? Easy. Because we've been through it. I'm 56 years old, and I've lived through three of these crises. In 1975 in Argentina, in 1989 in Argentina, where we had hyperinflation, a 10,000% inflation in one year. And in 2001 and 2002, when our whole financial and banking system collapsed and melted down, and we were practically on the verge of a civil war. Each one of these cycles had a different characteristic, but the results were always the same. First, all the profits were privatized, and then all the losses were socialized, and our country has become poorer and poorer and poorer. <clears throat> so we've seen it. The thing is that we've been able to see it because the cycle is very short in Argentina. It lasts between 12 and 17 years at most. You guys haven't seen it in America and in Europe because the cycle has lasted too long. For you, the Great Depression is just a black and white photograph of people queuing up online to get, a dish, to get some soup, some nice hot soup in the winter. And maybe, if you're my age, you remember something that your granddad said about the Depression and it was hard times and so forth. You never actually lived through it. We've gone through it. And we know how it all ends. And that is where this message, in a way from Argentina, from us here, is to be generous with you and try to open your eyes that this is going to only get worse. And that what we are seeing now is what I personally call Plan A. They're trying to sort it out by just putting in lots of money into it. Paulson and George Bush put a lot of money into it with Bernanke. And now it's Obama, Mr. Geithner, your secretary, uh, Treasury Secretary, <clears throat> and again, Mr. Bernanke putting in money. But you see, the problem is that you're trying to cover holes of secondary funny money with primary real money. In other words, with taxpayer money, from, which has to be approved by Congress, and with Federal Reserve notes, which is real money. You're trying to use real money to stop out huge secondary funny money holes, and it's just not, not going to be enough. And if you insist on that, you're just going to hyperinflate the dollar. So I think that what we're going to see is, as Plan A fails, and it will, we're going to see Plan B, which will be the same stuff plus probably a change in the U.S. dollar. We'll probably see a new dollar, which is going to be gold-backed, but it won't be any gold. It will probably be what I call financial sacred gold. It will be gold that will have either a chip or a hologram or something which is absolutely fail-safe and, and, and impossible to counterfeit, which will mean that that gold, Federal Reserve gold, let's call it, will be worth $20,000, $30,000 an ounce. Uh, pagan gold, or just regular gold, will be the, the one that you can buy and, and sell in the market, $1,000, $1,500 an ounce. And that will have a tremendous effect on the world because the U.S. government will be, will be able to say, okay, U.S. citizens, U.S. corporations, our allies and friends, one new dollar for one old dollar. And that would be just fine. But, for example, other parts of the world, the Muslim world, Latin America, Africa, they might just say, there's just not enough to go around, so let the market decide. And as people panic, people in my country, in Argentina, and in Africa, and in the Far East, and in, in the Middle East, will try to change their old dollars for new dollars, maybe at the rate of 2 to 1, maybe 4 to 1, maybe it will be 10, 20, 30 old dollars for every new dollar. And what would be the effect of that? That with the introduction of this new U.S. currency, you will be able to export the huge losses to definite geographies in the world. It's Latin America, Africa, the Far East, the Middle East, or even people that you just happen not to like. But I think that Plan B will also fail. And that as we saw 60 years ago, you will probably need a plan C. And plan C is just kicking the entire chessboard. It will mean going into a major global war, as happened in the 30s, because the United States resolved its problems by seeking to find and finding World War II, just as Germany did, because Germany had a similar problem, and they too sought a state of war and they found it. One country lost it, Germany, the other country won, the United States, the rest of history, the rest is history. And this time we're going to see, again, uh, an exit strategy based on a global war. Only this time, contrary to World War II, which ended with an A-bomb over Hiroshima and an A-bomb over Nagasaki, the, this third or fourth World War, depending on how you want to number it, will probably start with nuclear armament, but nobody knows where it will end. We're still in time to do something about it, and to do something about it means that everybody in the world, especially in the United States, especially in Europe, should understand the mechanisms behind this. 
identify the people responsible for it and start doing something about it. It's not just to save your own necks in the United States and in Europe, it's to save everybody's neck, not just in Argentina, but in the entire planet. Thanks a lot.